So this was probably the hardest painting I've ever done. And no, not because the amount of hours that I put into it. And no, not because it required a ridiculous amount of detail either. It was because of a little thing called eye discipline, which I'll get into later. And if you were wondering how long this painting took me, it took about seven hours in one, pretty much one sitting. Three hours, a 30 minute break in between, and then another four hours to finish. So I pretty much put in a whole work shift. And I'll get into why I chose to do it that way later. The colors that I use for this painting are my main five, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, cadmium lemon, and titanium white. And my honorary six palette member, burnt sienna. So let's get into it. So a lot of the difficulty from this painting stems from me wanting to challenge myself. I never painted so many transparent slash translucent objects ever in one painting. And I knew it would be a pain, but I guess for some reason I decided to do it anyway. One thing that I've realized as an artist is that a large proportion of the growth in art is mental. What do I mean by this? Well sure, skill plays a lot into it, but experience and experimentation can play a bigger role. Well how so, you ask? If I stay in my comfort zone in painting, I obviously limit my growth. For example, if I'm a still life painter, which I am, and I strictly paint fruits for example, this can become problematic, and one could argue why not just paint what I'm good at, which is fruits, paint what I'm comfortable with. Again, this limits growth and potential experience and technique that you could add to your arsenal. To be fair, you would be pretty good at painting fruits at that point, but you wouldn't have a good feel for painting in general. And feel is an important word because the way I define feel is knowing so much about the material you're working with that it kind of eliminates doubts and increases your efficiency when using it. You don't have to worry about will the paint move like this if I try this or will the subject appear reflective if I try this. Through different experiences you will I already have a good judgment about these things. To take my example to a different level, why should I, as a still life painter even, worry about painting portraits or landscapes? Well, here's what I've learned. The way you can bring a portrait to life with certain techniques can help bring a still life to life or any other subject matter to life. With portraits, having the right proportions is something that can make the difference between someone looking accurate or looking like their distant cousin. This sensitivity to proportion greatly helps with other subject types. The way you learn depth and perception in painting a landscape can greatly affect how I articulate the distance between objects in a still life. Pretty much what I'm saying here is to overcome that comfortability every once in a while. Keep yourself honest. Which is always why I try to paint glass every once in a while. And if you were interested in learning how to paint glass the way I do, I suggest checking out my Skillshare class about painting transparent, translucent, clear objects like glass link in the description below. So I mentioned eye discipline at the beginning of this video as the single hardest thing for me while doing this painting. When painting anything really, especially someone who paints representational art and realism, it's important to pay attention to what's actually there. And that sounds easy, but there are subtleties when looking at certain things that just 
may not register in your brain at times. For example, when I first started painting subjects like metal and glass, I figured I know what glass looks like. I should probably use a lot of white paint or I know how shiny metal is. I again should use a lot of the brightest colors on my palette. Where the eye discipline comes in is seeing what's actually there. Especially if there's a mildly light color, for example, next to a very dark color. There is an illusion that the mild color appears to be extremely light. And you may overcompensate for it. But no, paint was actually there. It even gets to the point a lot of the time where I have to hold my brush up with paint and compare it to the color on the actual subject with one eye closed to focus on it. But I know it'll pay off in the end and I know that these bright highlights or dark shadows will appear the same way that they should eventually. Since I put five objects like this next to each other, it became so frustrating that I wanted to stop and procrastinate so many times during this different phases of this painting. But I told myself that I trust my process and that I know it'll be worth it in the end. Plus, during the 30 minute break, I had coffee, which I never do, and I guess that helped as well. Now, of course, you don't have to paint in a scheduled time period like a robot, but I, I kind of chose to, and like I said at the beginning of this video, I did that for a reason. So when painting something like glass, I like to paint wet and wet or a la prima to show the brush strokes and the looseness a little more than usual. I think this has a great effect and again, knowing I had to do this nearly all in one sitting made me question my decision to do it even more. So one thing you'll notice I do right now is how loosely I apply highlights or how loosely I apply any brush strokes for that matter. Well, I always, I guess you could call this a matter of taste, but I always like the type of paintings that are very loose when you look at them up close, but when you look at them from a good viewing distance, it appears as though it's extremely realistic. So right now, up close, looking at this, you're like, wow, this, this looks very loose. This looks very not neat. It looks like there's a little bit of abstraction there. Well, I kind of do this on purpose. This goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of this video when I was talking about getting a feel for the paint, getting a feel for whatever medium you use knowing that some things you can get away with or not get away with but some techniques you can use that give the effect you want without having to put in an, an extreme amount of effort into the tiny details and that's the efficiency I was talking about and this painting is by no means my best painting, but it, of course, as the title suggests, was one of my hardest. And that brings me to a point. Sometimes in experimenting, you have to overcome the fear that you may produce a bad painting. And not that I'm saying this is a bad painting, but you go into it knowing that you may not have as much experience painting a certain type of subject and that there may be some 
mistakes or a learning curve along the way but that shouldn't be a reason to stop you from experimenting in the first place and honestly some of the times that I have experimented those paintings ended up being some of the best I've ever done and I guess a lot of artists don't really share the thoughts that are going through their head when they're painting what they're painting so let me kind of tell you what was going through mine during the whole process leading up to this point where I'm applying the highlights so everything before applying these highlights going through my head is well I guess this painting isn't going to turn out how I wanted it to even though I know that I paint a certain way and I know how painting is it's a lot of the time not going to look the way you want it until the end but there's just that there's just always that doubt in the back of my head when painting saying that this isn't going to look right or it may not look right or or even in the beginning when I'm just sketching out the painting I ask myself am I wasting my time painting a subject like this or especially because I don't have much experience with it and even for me someone who paints the glass a lot I've kind of kept it conservative when in the amounts that I painted when everything's transparent like this there's a lot of room to see flaws especially the way I paint where there's a lot of looseness up close like I said in the beginning it's mostly mental so just do it anyway I guess my last thing here is just keep creating keep drawing keep painting keep illustrating that's the one thing that from my experience makes it easy to keep going just staying in the groove if you stayed this far in thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed it uh, don't be afraid to subscribe like check out my other videos on Skillshare explaining how I paint these types of things and thanks for watching